Hey, what's going on, you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we have a bonus video for you guys. I'm going to be reviewing and reacting to these viral photos that have been coming on Twitter and Instagram by a guy named Jurgen Teller. If you guys don't know who he is, I just found out about him recently. He's a German photographer, I believe. He's a fine art photographer known for minimalism mm -hmm. and for also uh, what he calls or what some other people would call a amateur aesthetic very interesting and uh, these photos that have been posted online of famous celebrities like george clooney and the swords arrived in my search feed and i was like what the heck are these so here is pro photographer reacting to jurgen teller's photography i hope i'm pronouncing his name right too if you guys don't know what I'm talking about and you haven't seen these photos yet, a publication by the name of W Magazine posted, ironically under best performances, these photos and you can react along with me, starting with this one of Sophia Lillies. I have no idea what's going on here. I feel like this breaks a lot of uh, rules already because there's just too much going on. Yeah, the dress kind of grabs your attention towards her for sure. But the second one makes zero sense. Like, why is she sitting on the ground like that? I guess that could have been artistic had the leaves been placed a little bit more artistically. And if that white car wasn't there in the corner and that gate in the corner. This reminds me of like those old above the influence commercials about weed. Uh, I think it was like, um, this is Sarah or this is Mary, like when she's on marijuana and she's like flat on the couch. I think she has like a friend next to her saying like, I don't like it when she's on weed. And then they just, yeah, but <laughs> anyways, that's that's what it reminds me of. These photos are not what I would put in a magazine publication, especially for best performance. These, uh, these make no sense. I don't really get it at all. Moving along to James Corden. Um, what's up with this dude sitting on a folding chair in between what looks like a Toyota Previa and a BMW X5. The ground looks disgusting. The background is disgusting. His outfit is like normal. There's like no complaints. There's not what, again, not what I would put in a best performance category of a magazine, but it looks so awkward. He looks so uncomfortable. Guess that might be the point because his face looks like it's supposed to be intentionally like that. Uh, okay, though, this one is way worse. Why are both his feet on dirty cars? And oh my gosh, this looks terrible. It looks so bad and it's crooked. This is not good. This is so weird. Okay, this one is a little bit better with Talia Ryder. I hope I said her name right. Uh, it is still kind of weird. The dress really saves the photo, in my opinion. It saves whatever there is about this photo. It looks like they're just shooting in front of the same, like, LA apartment complex. The white car in the background is disgusting. Look, the front hubcap of that Prius is missing. Uh, it's, I think, yellowed on the door, too. Like, I'm paying attention way more to the car than I am on Talia Ryder. Okay, the second photo is also really bad. Why have those dead leaves right there with the cruddy-looking BMW right next to her? Oh, my God. Like, I'm not crazy good at my job. I'm good. Like, I'm a good photographer, in my opinion. Okay, maybe I'm just okay. But looking at these right now, like, doesn't scream, like professional like there's no retouching there's no like pro lighting at all it's just like natural light a very good outfit with a very famous actor but the background sucks like look at this one with yaya abdul mateen great outfit better background again what is the deal with the truck poking out in the corner with another prius in the background and the dirty gate on the left what is going on like with jurgen teller's photography this is not professional this is so this looks like it was taken on an iphone all right look at this one with maria bakalova very eye-catching pop color outfit uh the pose looks very uncomfortable she's on a really dirty ground those two cars look like they're bumper to bumper i think that's a previa again like, I feel like they picked the worst cars you could ever have in a photo shoot and they just smacked it in there. And Jesus, it is so bad. It, this photo is so bad. I'm pretty sure this is the person from Borat 2. Uh, God, Ugh, this is so weird. Okay, in this next one, he's clearly uncomfortable, like stuck between this crevice of a tree trunk and a telephone pole, a weird car in the back. Why is he off-centered? Why is he like this? Why is he all folded up like that? He looks really cold. There's a blue solo cup on the ground. Oh my God, and on this next one, now he's just like laying on dirty ground. Still looks like it was taken on an iPhone. Okay, this one of Lakeith Stanfield could, could, by the slimmest of chances, 
work because Lakeith Stanfield is a pretty weird guy. Super funny. He's one of my favorite actors now, but oh, the, the outfit kind of works with the location in the back. Again, like his character kind of allows this background to kind of work. Still though, not professional, not best performance. I'm going to say that over and over and over again. And I think the two photos that everybody knows about of this entire series that has been going viral is the one of George Clooney and Gal Gadot. So if you look at these two right now, the one with Gal Gadot is not crazy bad. The background is much better. I still wouldn't use a Jeep. I'm pretty sure that's a Jeep as the background. It's clean though. There's not like any dirt marks. There's still a tire shine on the Jeep, even on the spare tire. Uh, outfit is on point. Background is better. Lighting though, it looks like straight off of an iPhone because the HDR look is pretty much present. I think that's the HDR look. But I mean, like as a portrait photographer, you don't want to crowd the head too much with so many distractions and you have the corner of the car right behind her head and you're expecting some kind of intersection of some sorts and the palm trees in the back are way too distracting. Uh, yeah, that's not what I would do as my first instinct as a professional photographer. And lastly, we're going to leave off with George Clooney, who is carrying two bikes. It could look like you're, you're trying to show that he's a dad. Is he a dad? Is he a father? I don't know. I actually don't know that. But the way he's holding the bikes, he looks really awkward, like really uncomfortable. I think he's at his home. Yeah, photographed at his home. Oh, yes, he does have kids. I should read his shirt is really wrinkled and the bottom half. I'm pretty sure you're, if you have a stylist on set, they would fix that. The jeans are OK. The shoes are OK. It wouldn't be my first choice, but this is not what I would expect from a professional photographer. I guess those are all the photos that I'm going to go through for now, and you guys can go through it yourselves. But I kind of wanted to just chime in with my very unwarranted opinion of Jurgen Teller's latest work. And uh, my friends and I were talking about it yesterday because it popped up on my feed yesterday. And we were talking about how they do look like iPhone photos and it only works because there's a famous person in the frame. I think there was this long or short phase, I don't know how, how long it was, of celebrity photography. And what I mean by that is someone would get famous by literally just taking a photo of a celebrity in the wild. And because a famous A-lister is in the photo, that photographer, no matter what skill level is present or just on display, they would just get famous just like that. Like you could take the photo crooked with a Dutch angle. You could take it with flash. You could take it with film or digital. And But they would just get famous because there's an A-lister in that. I thought this phase was over because people start to realize that like, oh, there's actually not too much skill. You maybe had one strong strobe light or one strong flash blasting this person. And you, it looks like a nice paparazzi photo. So therefore, it's not that special at the end of the day. It's the person is the one that makes the photo, not the photographer, but the subject. So because I thought this phase was over and I saw this craziness pop up in virality, I was just like, what the heck? Like, are we back there? So my friends and I were talking about it and because they look so bad, it looks intentional and there could be some kind of like amateur aesthetic that Jurgen Teller or maybe some critics would say about this photo. So this begs the question, is this art? And you know, I think a lot of people would give like very politically correct PC answers to not hurt anybody's feelings. And I'm going to say yes and no, a cop out answer. I think it's not art because this guy's famous and he can kind of do whatever he wants now. And people can call that art. Sometimes people clap for the wrong reasons or clap for no reason. And um, for someone who is of his, I guess, pedigree or of his status, if he takes an iPhone photo of a celebrity, I'm pretty sure a lot of people would applaud that. For me, I don't really resonate with that kind of style. I don't know if a lot of people resonate with it, so that's why I wouldn't call it art. There's not much technique going into it. The reason why I say it would be art, my yes answer, is because it looks so intentionally bad. The celebrities obviously look uncomfortable. One of the celebrities said that it only took two clicks and 20 seconds and it was the fastest photo shoot of his life. And there could be a method to that madness of trying to Hum either humanize these celebrities or just to show some kind of irony that maybe some people are missing, some people are seeing. And because of that, because it made me think about it, because it made it look intentional, that's why I think it is also art while simultaneously not being art. I think for some of us, including myself, we work a long time, a lot of years in our craft, working on techniques, uh, lighting, composition. We want to pair a good outfit with a great location and 
you know, we want to create very compelling photography, whether that evokes emotion or evokes a lot of style. So whatever it may be, we work on a lot of that stuff and seeing Jurgen Teller's iPhone looking photos kind of shows that what the heck, like what, what direction is the photography world going in? If this revolutionizes a new style of photography of just doing that dirty location, but a famous person, I don't really know who that's going to inspire. It's, it's so weird how someone famous can make this cruddy looking art, but someone who is like a, like just starting out. And if they shot that people would not think that is good because like, it sucks that a famous name attached to a bad photo will still make that bad photo look good. So is what it is. We can't really control that. We can't control human perception of what is good and what is bad. You can only control what you like, what you make, and uh, hopefully you're making things that you love at the end of the day, regardless of people's opinions, regardless of how much attention it may conjure up or procure. So that's all I have for you guys in this video. Uh, what a weird time of photography that we're in. Uh, make sure you subscribe, like the video, comment down below what you thought of Jurgen Teller's photography. Uh, thank you for watching this bonus video. Hopefully you guys have a great weekend, I believe. And uh, I will see you guys in the next video. <gasps> Peace.